My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. I hope that you like, enjoy, and become a subscriber. Make sure that you hit that little bell next to the subscribe button too in case you haven't already done so. That way you'll be notified every time I have a new video. I've had a table dolly or what I call a rover for a long time. And it's based on another YouTuber's video from the Frugal Filmmaker and it allows me to get great tracking shots and other shots from intros in my videos like this. My rover needs to slow down and needs to go slower. So I'm gonna put bigger wheels on there and this has to do with the eight revolution per minute motor that my dolly uses. So to do that, I need to make some new hubs. The first thing to make these hubs is to machine them flat and I need to make a plug that I can turn the hubs and square things off with. And to do that, I need to make a simple Bondo plug that I get to put in my drill press and then square off and machine to the right size so they fit inside the hubs. Most everything on the Rover is made out of styrene and PVC. It's cheap, it's readily available, and is easily modifiable. I turned down the body filler with a chisel clamped into my cross slide vise and I use a little bit of sandpaper to get a nice snug fit. So the first thing that we're gonna do to the PVC end plugs is we're gonna just square them off because they tend to have a little bit of sink in them in the middle when they're uh, produced just making them flat so I don't have any issues with the bearings. Once they're uh, squared off on the bottom, I take a little end mill here and um, drill a hole in the middle of them to modify them. And now we're gonna attach the wheels. We're gonna take the old ones off, put the new ones on, pop in some new bearings, put it back together the way it was just for a test fit. The original wheels are from some roller blades. I think they're about 71 or 72 millimeters. These new ones are pretty big. They're from like a scooter. They're 125 millimeter diameter. So they're really big. Makes the whole unit look like a little hot rod. So my unit has a speed controller on it. Allows me to make the Rover go faster or slower. In this case, I still want it to go slower even than the eight revolutions per minute that the motor currently functions on. Since the wheels are bigger, I need to make a new motor mount. And this is one of the big upgrades to this unit is this motor mount uh, allow, is gonna allow me to just press on the motor and disengage the drive from the wheels, um, literally by pressing on the motor because it's gonna be spring loaded and I couldn't do that before. So this is necessary because sometimes you need to position the Rover uh, on your workspace uh, quickly and easily and uh, I wasn't able to do that um, before. The whole unit runs on a simple pivot and a spring. The spring presses up against the motor and the axle of the motor presses up against the wheel and that provides the friction that allows the drive to engage and uh, propel the rover forward. I'm just machining up some simple bits of styrene. This is where the motor all gets mounted. You can see the pivot point there on the right and the left uh, pocket. This is the flat spot that we're gonna machine onto one of the PVC collars that that motor mount is gonna get solvent welded to. I'm just squaring everything up before our final assembly. These pieces are all made out of flat styrene so they're super easy to machine. We're gonna pick out a spring. It's stuff that I regularly collect from different things that I disassemble. I save things like springs and gears for making stuff like this. If you're a product designer, it's probably a good idea to have this stuff on hand. It just makes making models a lot easier. So this is a little test fit of how things are gonna to fit together. Uh, you can see the motor mount there. I'm popping in the little pin. The spring is already loaded uh, in the back and it just gives a slight little movement. You can see it move up and down and this is how it engages the wheel to drive the actual rover. We still need to glue the motor mount onto the PVC collar. I'm just applying a little bit of solvent here and that's softening up the two pieces of plastic. 
We're going to clamp everything together and let that dry overnight or the solvent's going to evaporate. So it's basically going to bond those two pieces together. I have a little bit of electrical update. Um, it's not a major thing. I'm just putting on some quick disconnects here. So that if I ever wanted to swap out the motor uh, for, say, something with a little bit higher RPMs, if I wanted to go faster, I could simply uh, disconnect everything. I'm using some of these spade male and female um, quick connectors, something that you might use to uh, hook up electrical stuff like for your car or something like that. They're cheap and readily available at your local uh, auto supply store. Let's tin up those leads because we're going to solder them onto the motor. Here I'm going to crimp on some connectors on the uh, end coming from the speed controller that will mate up to the ones on the motor. I'm going to add a little bit of red nail polish onto the connector so I have a red one connected to a red one and a blue one connected to the blue one so there's no mix-ups, uh, the DC volts anyway so it wouldn't be a really big deal. Here's the final assembly of the pieces going together attaching the motor and the mount onto the unit and uh, the wheel back on plugging it in here you can see uh, how easy it is to engage and disengage the motor to move the unit around and we're all set ready to record some more video Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can click on the little icon on the bottom right of the screen to do that. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. Plus. Rock on. Click here to watch some of the other design and making videos that I have. If you'd like to have your music featured in one of my videos, drop me a line. Thank you.